Hi, in this video we will talk about how we can calculate the rate of change or change from a previous value. It's often needed when we are analyzing any data trends, for example, share prices. I'll be using the library or the package called dplyr. So let's make a very simple vector m1 and it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 which represents the days and I'll get the price of a fictitious share in another vector called m2 and let me combine both the vectors together into a data frame. So if I look at m I should have 10 observations, M1 and M2. Let me change the names as well so it makes a bit more meaning. Okay, so I'll call them as day and price. If I can go back to M again, you can see we have 10 days and the price of a fictitious share. So let's try to work on this and see how we can do a few, few things in terms of calculating the rate of change or the change. So using the dplyr, I uh, want to construct another data, data frame called mc and I'm using this pipe command. There's a concept in dplyr which we can use which is called previous, sorry, the lag. So there is a concept in dplyr which is called the lag. So lag simply means the value of um, a, a, a variable in the previous row and it's called lag. And let me run it so that you can appreciate how it works. So if I run MC, So let me run MC and with MC. So let me run MC and oh. Okay, so let me run MC and see what happens. We got a third column in our data set. So we have the price, and we can see we have a new field called a new column called previous. So previous has actually put the data from the previous day into this column. So if I look at the sixth row, you can see that this value has come from there, and this value has come from there, and this value has come from there. So the uh, uh, the the previous period data has been put using the the lag and similar similar to lag you can also use the next um, if I wanted the price of the next day I can call it as lead and see what happens so we got MC and here we go. We have a previous period data, and then the next one's data as well. So in the in the row two, we have got the data from row one, and also the data from row three. Now we can simply calculate the change. by doing this subtraction from today's price from the previous day's price. So here is a change. Obviously on day zero or day one, there was no change. On day two, we start subtracting today's price with the previous period's price two. So in this case, for example, 
this 10 minus 14 gives us negative 4. And if I wanted to convert this change into a change percentage, I could simply multiply it by 100 and I'll get that in another column. So here we go. That um, rate has been converted into a percentage now. We could have simplified this instead of calculating the previous and then calculating the next and we could have simply done the whole thing in one simple statement and that would have been just saying price divided by lag price and that will give us a, a rate as well so this is the change in terms of So if you multiply 10 with 1.2, you're going to get 12. And if I wanted to get the percentage change, I could have done price divided by lag price minus 1 into 100. So it gives us the same thing. Instead of calculating it separately by calling the previous and then next, I can simply say price divided by lag price minus one and uh, multiplied by 100. And if I wanted to see how my share is performing the day one when I bought my share, I can do that as well. For example, I can create a, a field called day one price and that'll be the first rose price for that day so hopefully we should have this yeah so day one price is 10 that's good we can use that and calculate so if i look at mc i can see that this has been my change overall on the day 10th, my share price is down by minus 40%, which from 10, it has gone down to six. How about plotting this change? So let me use the ggplot package. And I'll use ggplot data equals mc, the data, data frame which we have created and we have calculated our, our changes in a different in different fashion. And I would like to use a line plot calling the geom line and using x as the factor of the day and y being the price of the share. And I want to give it a blue color and group equals one. And if I run my chart, I get a line chart. Let me use a theme to make it a bit more clearer. So here we go, we have a theme classic. Okay, so this is our simple line chart. What if I wanted to plot some dots as well? All I had to do is give a jump point statement with X and the Y aesthetics for that. Okay, here we got the, the line going and the dots or the points coming as well. Now let me bring in the percentage change in this as well. So if I can put it up here, I want to have a jump call or the column Again, the same thing, x equals the day, but in the y, I want to have the percentage change or the PCT underscore change. And I want to fill the percentage 
let me remove this for the time being. Let me make it simple and run it for you. Okay, let, let, let's have this percentage change plotted as a jump call as well. So if I run this whole statement, you would see that a bar plot has been created on the line chart as well. We will have to reduce the transparency to make a bit more sense into that. And I can put an alpha statement there to make our bars a bit more transparent. We can also change the color by giving a, a fill option. And I can say fill. And I can give a conditional fill saying percentage change equals or more, more than zero. If the change happens to be more than zero, then we would color it differently compared to when it's negative. So let's run and see the results. So it has given us two colors, blue or green, blue or red or green or red. I can bit, I can make some, some more changes to that. What if I wanted to have the color controlled as well? I can give a scale fin manual and see what happens now. You can see that scale fill manual has given us green and orange instead of the, the previous colors which you we were getting. We can control our true color or when this condition is met and when this condition is not met by giving two sets of colors in there. Now what if I wanted to see what my percentage change has been. I can do a jump text command. So to make it simple, we are simply saying, I want to have some text and this is the location for the text x equals factor day and y equals percentage change and what do we want to print it we want to print the percentage change and i want to round it by two digits and i want to place a symbol of percentage after that so that paste statement is going to give us that and the size i just want to make it size three and i want to we justify it by minus 0 0.5 that puts the, the text bit higher than where the, the bars finish. Nope. So if I zoom it for you, you can see that the text has been placed at the right spot. Again, we can adjust these points by using different uh, V justifications. We've used minus justification there. We might have to increase it to, to plus justification in this case to bring it down. You can play with that. So this is um, this video has given you some idea of how you can calculate the, the 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 previous period or the next period information in your current record. You can use that to calculate your change. You can calculate the change uh, by change uh, converting it into a percentage, and there are different ways of uh, doing that. And then we saw how we can actually do a change from our given point for example in this case the the first day's price and with that we come to the end of this video hope you got some useful information out of this and thank you very much for having a look at this video i'll see you in the next video thank you